morning, it's Sunday, and I wanted to talk to you all about one of the illustrations I did previously, and I went ahead and turned it into this promo card here. It is a 4x6 printed postcard, and so I'm going to go over um, how I designed this, how I put it together, laid it out, and then how do I know who to send this out to, and maybe some additional information if you're looking for different print vendors and things like that. Um, so stay tuned and check it out. Alright guys, so I'm in Adobe InDesign and that's what I use to lay out my postcards. Um, I'm going to go over this way and then I'm going to also show you how you would do it in some free software, but I'm going to save that for another video. So this is if you um, have the Adobe subscription. Um, this is great for laying things out. Um, oftentimes I would use this to lay out brochures, um, magazines with my students. So. If you have students that are interested in creating your own promotional material, this is how you would lay it out. So this is my digital file right here in Adobe InDesign, and you can see my information down below. Okay, so I'm going to start from the very beginning, so I'm going to X out of this. Okay, so Adobe InDesign is great for multiple page layout. I would come over here, hit Create New. Okay, so it comes up with this um, window right here, so you can set up for print if I want to. I like to make my units inches. We know this is going to be a 4x6 postcard. You need to decide if you're vertical or um, horizontal. Okay, 4x6 is a standard size. If I want to switch orientation, I can just click back and forth here. I know I want landscape, which is horizontal. A number of pages is 1. Um, column is going to be 1. Margin, I want this to be 0.25. This is what we call your live area. So any text, you want to keep it in that box that it's going to create. My bleed is going to be 0.125, which automatically, when you type it in one field, it will automatically update. Okay, so I'm going to hit create. It's much easier to explain this once you see it. You could also hit the check mark and preview it, but I'm just going to hit create. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. And I just, I'm on a Mac, so I hit Command plus or minus to zoom in and out. This white box is my document size. This very edge of the white is my trim area that my cursor is following. The pink box on the inside is your live area. So when I say live area, that's where you want to keep your text. You don't want anything getting cropped off or chopped, okay? This red area that's in the gray, that is your bleed. Okay, so I'm not going to go over all the tools, but this is just to get you started. Okay, I want to save this file. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm just going to call this promo. And I'm going to call it Postcard for or a six by four template and I'm gonna go ahead and put the date because I've started doing this because sometimes even though you'll see the date you can always do search by date this kind of helps me remember when I make things and when I have to search for things if I lose it all right so I'm using the space bar it allows me to maneuver up and down with the canvas the document right here okay the main one that you're going to use is this little box right here. This is called a frame. So if you think of a picture frame, a picture frame allows you to go ahead and put something in it, right? So people can see it. So I'm going to left click on this and then along the bleed, I'm going to left click and hold and drag. And now I have my frame. Now I want to put something in the frame. So I'm going to use my selection tool. And if I click off of it, it's not selected, right? But it's still there if I left click on it. So I'm going to go to file and I will go ahead and I am going to do something called place, or you can hit Command D or Control D on a PC. When I hit place, that's going to go ahead and allow me to put the image file in there. So I know that I have it here, here, and let me go to Final Finish. There it is, and I saved it as a TIFF. So. A TIFF is a nice high resolution um, file okay, that I could use. Um, I'm not going to go over your resolution. I assume if you're working digitally, you know to work 300 pixels per inch. And then I'm going to hit open. Okay, so it's bigger because I originally built this to be larger than the print size. Okay, so these two, one allows you to select the frame. This direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, that allows you to actually select 
what's inside the frame. So they're two different things. Okay, so there's more of the picture here, and I always use a keyboard shortcut for this. I honestly can't remember where I go back to find it, but I'm going to hit Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E as an excellent, and while it's selected, okay, see what happens? It proportionally fits it in the frame. Now, if I hit Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC, it goes back to the original. Command Option E will fit it and it will distort it. So if you do Command Option E, it fits it within that frame, but it's distorted. How do I know it's distorted? Well, I've got the white arrow here, the direct selection tool. I'm selecting the image, and if I come over here, you're going to see your proportions. This is scaled down horizontally 63.12 and then vertically 65.5. Those numbers need to match. Otherwise, you've distorted the image. Probably with this one, no one would notice, you know, but I don't want to distort it. So I'm going to do Command, Option, Shift, letter E to get it started. Okay, so here's the thing. You might run across, oh, well, it's not fitting within it's got to go to that bleed because otherwise it's really close to the where it's trimming where the machines actually cut it so with the white arrow i can select and i can just drag this up and i hold my shift key this will keep it proportional and then i can center it see when you get those smart guides those pink lines that tells you it's centered boom okay so now if i hit the letter w I can see what it looks like when it's trimmed off okay now I need to include some pertinent information like my contact information okay and this is just going to be a single-sided postcard 4 by 6 is standard um, it, for US mail if you live somewhere else it might be different um, outside of the United States but in the US 4 by 6 is it's gonna cost you and this is in 2020 August of 2020 it'll cost you 35 cents to mail out this postcard okay so I am gonna hit tap the letter W on my keyboard and what I'm gonna do is I want to move see I want to shift it up because I kinda wanna lose some of that at the top that's not really necessary then I switch over okay did my direct selection tool and now I can adjust the frame I can left click and drag it up and I have now some of this white area and I'm okay if I'm losing some of the boots I think they'll realize okay I think I'm going to switch back to the picture and I'm going to use the white direct selection. I'm just going to bump it up. You can use your arrow keys on your keyboard. If you need to, go back to your W. There you go. I'm happy with that. And I can actually shrink it a little bit more. Let's shrink it a little bit more. There we go. I do want a little bit of the top of the boots. Okay, so now I have space down here below and I'm gonna hit the t letter W on my keyboard again and I need to add text so T for type this is your type tool this allows you to create a frame that you can actually put words in so see how my cursors change left click and drag I want to keep it between that live area up here at the top okay so the reason why I see this your settings I forgot to go over this very beginning but there's different workspaces so I tend to use instead of essentials I always do typography because I'll get this um, options panel here at the top and then I can go ahead and start editing my text because any tool here that's selected while I've set my workspace to typography um, I'm gonna get the option setting here for that tool and I can adjust it instead of looking always on the panels here on the side. So I'm gonna put my name. I like the little straight line. I wanna include my website. Yep, check your typing. And you can always run spell check. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm in IG. I'm gonna be in illustration. Okay. So I don't really care for this type. I want it to be center justified. So if center justified means within that box, it fits in the center. So with the text selected, T for type come up here. Now it's centered. Now I can come over here and I can change it to whatever typeface I want. Um, I have one, you know, you can always preview it here on the side. And I think I want this one right here. I think I'm okay with that. 
or I can pick something else. Maybe something else. Maybe... Nah, I'd go with that. I'm fine with that. You pick whatever typeface. And do you see how I keep it within the pink right here? I'm going to highlight that. And then I can scale it up bigger by changing the point size here if I feel like I need to go a little bit larger. I think I'm going to keep it 12. But you know what? I think I want to put more space between the individual letters. Okay, so if I want more spacing between all of the individual letters, it's called tracking. If it's between um, two individual letters, that would be called kerning in graphic design. I'm going to highlight by double left clicking on it. Okay, so with this, I'm going to go to Window, and I am going to go to Type and Tables, and I would go to Character, or you can hit Command-T on a Mac, or Control-T. Okay, the panel's already up. This is what happens. This panel will show up here, and I can adjust the spacing between the letters. And like here, I can tell this is for all the letters, the spacing between all the letters, and that is your tracking, and I think, you know, let me try out 10. You can hit here and you can let's do 50. Okay, so I did 50. Boom. There we go. Now I'm going to hit W. And I can see it and I want to adjust it a little bit. I can bring it down. I just use the up and down arrow keys because I kind of want it centered. There we go. And then if I hit W again, it's a little bit below and I think I have enough space. It'll clear it fine. If you're a little bit concerned, you can bring it back up. Okay. Just because sometimes they're not perfect when they cut things. It just happens that way, you know, because they're stacking, you know, like reams and reams of paper at one time. So they might not be just cutting your cards, but also with these bigger printers, they're cutting lots of cards at one time. So they're just stacking them and then all the ones that are the same, they, they cut them. And so the guillotine cutters, there's always a little bit of... Um, room for error it's not going to always be precise okay um most of the people if you order online they will accept a high-res pdf so if i go to file i go to export let's make this into a pdf okay so i'm going to go to my desktop and i want the format to be a adobe pdf for print okay then I like the file name as is, so I'm okay with that. Hit save, you get this, and this seems a little overwhelming. Most of your print vendors are going to want a PDF X slash X1. Okay, mine is modified because the print vendor I ended up choosing, um, they wanted some settings a little bit different. So general, I want to make sure I want all pages. It Basically, I'm doing a single-sided postcard, so I am just need one and all pages. Compression. It's fine. This is when you do a PDF X1, it's going to be high res. Mark some bleed. I want bleed and slug. If anything extends beyond where they're going to trim, see where my cursor is, um, that image, you want to include the bleed. I don't care about crop marks or anything like that. They normally do not want you to include that because it can cause um, their AI or whatever that sizes it into, like the preview, it'll be off if you have any of that checked. Output. Um, my vendor said no color conversion, so that's where I had to change it. And then I just hit export. And then if I go to my desktop here, there it is. And I double click on it and I have Adobe Acrobat. That opens up. And so here, I did not extend it. So here's something I might have, I should have looked closer, but there's a mistake. I got to go back and fix that. So I'll show you how to go back and fix that. Yeah, I'm a little nervous because I was demoing. Ah, see, now I zoom in. You can use the magnifying glass and I'm getting old. There we go. Look at that. I was not close. So use the white one because I want the image to be changed. And let's hold the shift key and drag it to the bleed. There we go. Oh, and on the other side, too. There we go. Yeah, I'm much happier with that, right? Except for that clock. It's hitting the very edge of it. So let's bring that down. It's always a back and forth, just to make sure. And I'm going to bring that up just a wee bit. There we go. That looks better. I'm going to hit Command-S to save on a Mac. Control-S on a PC. And then I'm going to go to File, I'm going to Export, and I want to save over the other one, so that's fine. I'm going to hit Save, and it's going to ask me to replace. 
and then I'm going to hit export. All the previous settings should have um, kept it the same there. You can double check it if you're not sure. Double click on it. Let's see if it fixed it. Ah, much better. I'm going to zoom out. There we go. So now this file is ready to be sent to the print vendor online. And most of the print vendors online, because they're they're going for volume, and it's not like I'm not doing um, like a gicle prints or anything like that. This, this is like digital printing. So the ones that I'm looking at, they're doing digital printing. It's a lot cheaper for those prices. And I'm going to go online and show you some of the ones that I checked out when I was looking for print vendors.